Hey, what's up everybody? It's video 44 coming at you for a third time trying to make a video. <laughs> this doesn't usually happen. I'm a one take Jake kind of guy, but today I can't seem to get together. Um, so this is what's happening in short. As I've said to you guys several months ago, I made videos saying that I think Lamar, Lamar, LeVar Ball uh, in his dream is the way to go for the Charlotte Hornets. They should bring all the Ball brothers together because they're in a position to where they can do so being that the the player that they're building around, their whole franchise centered around is LaMelo Ball. Okay, so it's one of those situations where it's like, it, it just makes all the sense in the world. You're in a position to bring his brother to him. You ain't doing nothing else. He's, you go as he goes. You know what he wants. His family's already told you before they even got to the league what they want. For everybody to play together it's in LA. It didn't work in LA, but it can work in Charlotte. So that's what MJ appears to be trying to do if this rumor is in fact true. Um, now, the thing about it was, in the video that I made, I sat up here and said, oh, well, they're going to be sending Scary Terry in to sign a trade. And it wasn't Scary Terry. It was Devontae Graham. So that's why I'm here making a third take. The rumor is they're going to do a double sign a trade. Sign and trade. Devontae Graham would sign and trade his deal to the Pelicans. And, of course, Lonzo Ball would sign his deal. And that would be traded to the Hornets. Um, it just makes all the sense in the world, really. Um, you just want to make... Lamelo happy at the end of the day you don't want him looking elsewhere you don't want him to leave you know what his family wants so you bring him to both his brothers they already got Jello on board they're trying to get Zoe on board and uh, it's just it's common sense if you're the Charlotte Hornets <laughs> you, you, it's just common sense so that's a good thing the thing about it is if I'm the New Orleans Pelicans <clears throat> I like Devontae Graham but I don't think I'm making that trade for Devontae Graham now if it's if it's scary Terry Let's do this. But Devontae Graham, I'm not sure I value him the same way I value Lonzo Ball. So I'm not sure if that's going to be the end of the deal. They'll probably have to enter, uh, put some more stuff in there. They're going to have to sweeten that pot, in my opinion. Um, Devontae's worth less than Zoe at this stage in his career. Uh, period. The end. So I, I don't I don't know if there would be more. It didn't say anything else was involved in the deal. But you know how these things go. If the GM's thinking like I'm thinking, you better sweeten that pot, New Orleans. Um, but that's what it is, you know. And Devontae Graham's fit in New Orleans would be great if he's healthy. He's a guy who can score. He can drop 30 on you. He's a fearless shooter, a fearless scorer, good creating for himself uh, off the bounce in terms of, like, uh, sh shooting off the catch, rather, catch and shoot situations, stuff like that. He's really good. So, you know, this is somebody who I look at as, like, a – a real pure score like you're just gonna get a lot of points out of this guy if you give him a lot of production a lot of minutes he'll give you a lot of production so um i like him a lot and if he's healthy he can help the pelicans quite a bit i don't know um what his assist game is like is his facilitation game i'm just not aware cry ignorance i haven't watched a whole lot of charlotte's ball uh with him playing but at the same time uh, i do remember what he's good at and and he's definitely a player who can do what the Pelicans need him to do in terms of spacing the floor, uh, making sure that nothing is clogging the way for Zion at all. He could just fly down the lane and dunk on people's heads repeatedly, and if need be, kick it out to a guy like Devontae Graham, as to which he would knock down a bunch of threes every night. Uh, so it's a good fit. I would just need more from Charlotte. You'd have to give me more. Um, but yeah, so that's what I think of that. That's what I think of that. Um, I love that what I envisioned being reasonable a long time ago is starting to come about. That 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 gives me confidence that I'm on the right path in terms of how I'm viewing things because a lot of times I'll be wrong too. And it allows me to understand that, um, you know, GMs are doing the right thing as I perceive it to be, you know. They're starting to learn from the mistakes that they've made in the past, not making players happy. Uh, thinking that just because you've inherited a young player that you have four years to try to build around him. No. The type of talent that's coming into this league is is, is strong-minded. They're, they're LeBron-raised, you feel me? And they understand what their worth is. And if you are not trying to build around them like a superstar or pay them like a superstar or bring them what they want like a superstar, uh, you run the risk of having them dart. Dart sometimes before their rookie contracts even up, they'll be ready to get up out of there. Like, yo, trade me now guy like Zion, he could ask for a trade right now, and I bet you he gets it. You know what I mean? So it's like, 
you want to put yourself in a position as a franchise to just do everything you can to, to make sure that the young players that you believe in, that you're going to give the keys to the car to, feel like they have the keys. And I think that MJ understands that as the biggest superstar to ever play basketball. And he's going to make sure that LaMelo feels feels like he should, you know, playing for, for the Hornets. So uh, I like it. I think it's the right decision. I think it's a good faith decision to do for the Ball family who um, obviously have been through a lot. I would like to see them not have to wait forever. I'd like to see this happen for LaVar, LaVar, LaVar Ball in his lifetime and their mother in their lifetime, you feel me? Um, yeah, that's how I look at that. I, I would love to see that now. So I think it's good. It's the right thing to do. And I think they're going to play well. I don't know if they can win the East um, or nothing like that. They're going to have to get a lot more going on than just bringing the Ball Brothers together, in my opinion. But what you're going to see out of that team um, at full strength is a whole lot of fast pace, full court tosses. You're going to see some of the best passing you've ever seen in your life between these two kids. That's what I know. That's what I know. You're putting arguably the two best facilitators in the world, not named LeBron James and Chris Paul, on the floor at the same time. That's what you're doing. You're not just bringing two brothers together. You're bringing two guys that are essentially supposed to make other people better. Um, that's what they're good at. So guys like P.J. Washington, guys like Gordon Hayward, um, obviously Bridges, players that they're, they're retaining, because I know a couple of them aren't coming back, but guys like Scary Terry, if he's staying, they are going to have so much fun playing on this Hornets team. So much fun. Because not only do you have one ball brother darting the ball all over the place making you look good, but you have two of them. Two. And I'll tell you this. No one's expecting anything out of Jello Ball. I get it. No one's expecting anything out of him. He's not built like an athlete necessarily as a potential basketball player. He's not agile. He's not wiggly. But if you leave him in one spot and tell him to catch passes from his brother and hit threes, he can do that all game long. All game long. People are going to be shocked to hell when they see how well Jello Ball can score. I don't know if he can do anything else. I don't know. But I promise you, you don't get raised around those two basketball players and not be the recipient of fantastic rhythm passes that get you in your shooting pocket repeatedly all life long. That's what he's been receiving. He's a great scorer in college, in high school. He was a great, not a good one, a great one. Go check his numbers. He wasn't normal. He wasn't putting up normal numbers. Dude was putting up 50 and stuff, 60. He was putting up numbers like that from three. And it's because of the pace that they played and the fact that he was the recipient of not one, but two ball brother facilitation actions. I kid you not. This is the type of situation where if I'm Carl Anthony Towns, I'm looking at Charlotte and I'm saying, they got two of them. <laughs> that's that's if I'm a guy like uh, Joel Embiid, I'm looking over at Charlotte. And I'm saying, they got two facilitators, two ball brothers, not one but two. You see what I'm saying? I know that a lot of people who are fans don't look at basketball this way because it's it's fun to hate on Lonzo. It's fun too. It's it's a fad. It's a uh, it's in style to hate on this dude. But I'm telling you, if you're a real basketball mind, especially if you're a scoring first mentality player, you want to be there where two outer-worldly facilitators can get you the ball. If I'm a guy like Bradley Beal or Devin Booker, that's the type of situation I want to be in because I know I'm scoring all day. Those are not selfish players. I know I'm going to get the ball. If I cut hard, they're going to see me. If, if I'm doing something, if I'm doing something, that puts me in a position to get an open shot, wherever I am on the floor, they're gonna see it. Not one guy, but two. So that means two opportunities for great shots in every possession. Two opportunities for unreal plays in every possession. That's what multiple playmaking does. That's why the Lakers are putting together LeBron James and Russell Westbrook. That's essentially why they wanted Lonzo Ball again. It's because of that dynamic to where scoring players are getting recipients of great plays from both sides of the floor. It, that, that type of ball movement is what made the Spurs so special. You know what I mean? When you have guys like Ginobili and Parker 
and obviously Timmy, who all have that passing genius, who can all run plays that are complex and see things develop as they happen in real time and are able to react to them on the fly. That's the beauty of a Magic Johnson, a LeBron James, uh, guys like Jason Kidd and all. Those guys had it. You know, talk about Ben Simmons. You talk about the guy Atlanta just got. I wish I had his name in my mind, but the guy that they got in the back of the draft, he has that passing genius too. He's going to be one of the great playmakers in this league. They got him in the second round. So I'm telling you, passing is the way to go. Scotty Barnes, he got it. It's an influx of playmakers coming into this league. And the more you have, especially if they can stretch the floor, the better. And Lonzo was improving from three, and 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 obviously Lamelo doesn't have that issue. So, hey man, it makes all the sense in the world from a basketball standpoint. It ain't just sentiment. You can you can work with those two players. So, that's what I gotta say, man. <laughs> that's that's exactly why I'm saying Annie. Oh, up the ante, New Orleans. Up the ante, uh, Charlotte rather. Don't don't just hand over Devontae Graham, fam. You got to give me more than that if that's if this is what you're getting back. I'm making you pay for the fact that you're not only getting i'm doing the i'm doing you like the clippers were done you're not only gonna pay for paul george you're gonna pay for paul george and Kwan Leonard because i understand what it is you're trying to do and that's exactly how i would look at it if i were the new orleans pelicans so that's what i got man my name is bdl44 thank you all for watching i'm out